Good afternoon students. Welcome back to our third unit that is yoga and lifestyle. I hope you all have enjoyed the previous part in which we have discussed about the asanas, the meaning of asanas and the preventive measures of it. Further we have discussed about the obesity, the disorder obesity in which we have in which we have discussed in detail about the procedures, benefits and contraindications for the asans, the asans we have studied that are Vajrasan, Padastasan, Udvahastasana, Trikonasan and Ardhamachindrasan. I hope you all have tried, at least you must have seen the asans and how they are being done. And if you all are interested, we can take an online lecture, I mean online session of the yoga in which we would physically perform the asanas and you would actually get to know how it's been done. So coming back to our second part, so now we are going to focus on the topics which we are going to study in this part too. So the first point is diabetes. We are going to know what is diabetes. Then the procedures, benefits and contraindications for the asans related to the diabetes. So, which are the asans that can cure diabetes are Bhujangasana, Paschimuttanasana, Pavanmuktasana and Ardhamachindrasana. The second point which we are going to cover in this topic uh, is Asthma. You all must be knowing what is Asthma. So we will study in detail about the term asthma and uh, we are going to discuss uh, the same things like procedure benefits and contraindications for some of the asanas that may cure asthma so we'll see what are the asanas that can cure asthma the first one is sukhasana it is very easy asan the second one is chakrasan Third one is Gomukhasan, fourth Parvatasana, fifth Bhujangasana, sixth Paschimuttanasana, and the last one is Matsyasana. Diabetes. What is diabetes? Diabetes is nothing but it's a very dangerous condition. If diabetes is not controlled, it can lead to renal failure, loss of vision, amputation of limbs and cardiovascular diseases. Diabetes is such a disorder that it causes sugar to build up in our bloodstreams instead of being used by the cells in our bodies. In fact, our body uses a hormone that is the hormone insulin to control the level of sugar in our blood. When our body does not produce sufficient amount of insulin or when, it, when insulin does not work properly, diabetes occurs. There are two types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2 diabetes. In type 1 diabetes, the pancreatic glands does not produce insulin. Hence, injection of insulin is required, that is daily, for its treatment. In type 2 diabetes, the body does not produce sufficient amount of insulin or the hormone is produced sufficiently but it is not used properly by the body. There are very frequent cases of type 2 diabetes whereas the cases of diabetes 1 are very rare. The feeling of tiredness, numbness in hands and feet, the feeling of tiredness, frequent numbness in hands, feet, blurred vision, excessive weight loss, non-healing wounds, etc. are the common symptoms of diabetes. As we have discussed previously regarding obesity, so the people with obesity usually fall a prey of the diabetes. Diabetes can be cured if they follow the asanas regularly. Procedure So how to perform Bhujangasana? In this asana, the shape of the body remains like a snake. That is why it is called Bhujangasan. In order to perform this asana, lie down on the belly, on the ground. 
keep your hands near to the shoulders then keep your legs close together now strengthen up your arms slowly and raise your chest your head should turn backward or it may you can see to the wall or ceiling keep this posture for some time then get back to the normal position for a good results perform this asan 3 to 5 times you can do a forward bending i mean kneel to your front because your body or your backbone get stretched so when you stretch and rubber it should it comes to its original position so you should while doing backward bending you should simultaneously do forward bending so what are the benefits of bhujangasana bhujangasana elevates obesity it provides strength and agility it also cures the disorders of urinary bladder it cures the disease of liver as well it improves blood circulation it makes the vertebral column flexible and thin it cures gas disorders constipation and indigestion it also strengthens the muscles of hands these are all the benefits of bhujangasana contraindications contraindications of bhujangasana this asan should be avoided by the individual who suffers from hernia as well as the person who has back injuries headaches and recent abdominal surgeries they should not perform this asan pregnant women should also not perform this asan because there is a stretch to your abdominal part so they should avoid it during the pregnancy this asan is suggested in the first stage of pregnancy i mean uh, the prenatal time this asan is been uh, told to perform as it uh, makes or it stretches your stomach i mean the it uh, makes a space to the baby so this asan is being told to perform uh, in the first stage of the pregnancy this is for your information it's not in the syllabus but you should know it the next asan which we are going to discuss is paschimottan asan you can see in the picture the students of our school are performing paschimottan asan the name of this asan is derived from the sanskrit word as well paschima with Which means west or back or back of the body, and uttan means intense stretch or straight or extended. Means you should stretch your trunk to your toes. Now we'll study how to perform Paschimottanasana. Sit down straight with your legs together by stretching in the front. Keep your head, neck, and spine very erect. then the palm should be rest on the respective knees after which you should bend your head and trunk slowly forward to catch the toes with the thumb index and the middle finger without bending your knees your knees should be straight take a deep breath while you are going forward and exhale slowly try to touch the head to your knees then bend the arms and try to touch your elbow to the floor as shown in the figure previously exhale completely and holding the breath stay in this posture for a few minutes after few seconds slowly return to the starting position and breathe normally you can repeat this posture for 3 to 4 times so what are the benefits of doing this asan the first most important benefit is it elevates gas trouble it also prevents the early oxification of bones it is a good remedy for constipation 
it helps to overcome several menstrual disorders. It also gives relief in sacriatic back and asthma. It reduces obesity. It is helpful in treating abdominal diseases as well. It is helpful in curing skin diseases. Vertebra become flexible and healthy. This asin is also pain told when the person is obese. This asin reduces your stomach as well. Contraindications of Paschimottanasana If you are suffering from enlarged liver or spleen, you should never do this asana. Avoid doing this asana if you are suffering from any respiratory diseases or cardiovascular diseases. If you have any back or spinal problem, make sure that you perform this asana only under the expert guidance. The next asana is Pavana Muktasana. Pavan Muktasan, the name comes from the Sanskrit Pavan means wind, Mukta means free. The pose is unknown in the medieval Hatha Yoga appearing in the 20th century. This asana is very simple and can be performed by everyone. Procedure to perform Pavan Muktasana Lie down on your back on the plane surface, keep your feet together and place your arms beside your body. Take a deep breath when you exhale, bring your knees towards your chest. At the same time, press your thighs on your abdomen. Clap your hand around your legs. Hold the asin when you breathe normally. Your chin should touch your knees. Every time you exhale, ensure that you loosen the grip. Exhale and release the pose after you rock. Rock and roll from side to side about 3 to 4 times. In this position, you can also swing your body back and forth 5 to 10 times and then swing the body left to right and right to left 5 to 10 times. Benefits of Pavan Muktasan It eases the tension in the lower back that is to your monkey bone. It enhances the blood circulation in the pelvic area. It helps in reducing the fats of the thighs, buttocks and abdominal area. It strengthens the abdominal muscles as well. It also massages the intestines and the organs of the digestive system, which in, in short helps in releasing the gas and thus improves digestion. It also relieves constipation. These are all the benefits of doing Pavan Muktasan. So it has been told previously that do perform this asans regularly. Now finally the contraindications of this asan. If you are suffering from the heart problems, hyperacidity, high blood pressure, slip disc and hernia, you should avoid this asan. You should never do this asan. Pregnant women should avoid doing this asan. If you have or had an abdominal surgery recently, you should avoid performing this asana. The individual suffering from piles should avoid this asana. They should not take a risk and do this asana. Procedure benefits and contraindications of Ardhamachindrasana have been previously discussed in the part 1. So we are not going to discuss it again. By seeing the poster in the photo, you may recall this asana. And it is very easy. By seeing the photos, you may easily recall what asana it is.
the next sub point in this part 2 that we are going to discuss is asthma asthma is the disease of lungs in which the airways becomes blocked or narrow causing difficulty in breathing in asthma the airway also swells up and produce extra mucus it usually triggers coughing whistling and shortens breath the coughing usually occurs at night or early in the morning the excessive amount of mucus in the passage further narrows the airways because it is sticky and thick for some people it can be minor whereas for the other it can be a major problem that can hinder their daily activities as well and this usually leads to a life threatening asthma attack asthma is such a disease that it cannot be cured or treated but its symptoms can be controlled asthma can be allergic and non allergic as well asthma may be due to the genetic factor as well there are substances that causes allergies like irritant in the air including smoke from the cigarettes wood and fire strong fumes sprays perfumes soaps etc respiratory infections such as cold flu sore throat and sinus infections exercising in cold air and some medications such as beta blockers aspirin non steroid anti inflammatory drugs etc asthma can be prevented as well as cured if you perform or practice the following asanas that which we are going to discuss in asthma we are going to study the our first asana that is sukhasana So what is sukhasana Sukhasana comes from the Sanskrit word sukha means pleasure and asana means posture or the seat It is a simply cross leg sitting asana in hatha yoga sometimes used for meditation in both Buddhism and Hinduism and it's a very simple asana procedure of sukhasana so sit down with the legs straight in front of the body after that bend the le- right leg and place the foot under the left thigh then bend the left leg and keep the foot under the right thigh place the hands on the knees in the meditation posture chin should be kept straight neck and backbone should be straight erect close the eyes and relax your body this is the simple posture of sukhasana as the name is it's in the same way it gives pleasure so what are the benefits of doing this asana it facilitates mental and physical balance without causing strain or pain it stretches the lengthness of spine it calms your mind it enhances your peace of the mind it also reduces anxiety stress and mental fatigue it helps in improving body posture it provides gentle massage to the knees calf muscles and thighs it spans a sense of calmness throughout your body and mind contraindications of sukhasana this asan doesn't have excessively numerous contraindications however individuals who are experiencing backache should stay in the position for not more than 5 minutes person suffering from knee injury is not advised to sit in the position for a longer time if you have a slip disc problem you should take a proper care while performing this asana 
this asan may be very easy but it is that difficult you can't be that steady that straight while performing this asan it needs a long experience to perform this asan chakrasana the name of this asan is derived from an addition of two different words that is chakra that means wheels and asan means posture uh, you can see in the picture the two kids they are from the junior kg of our school at the so small age they are performing the asans it's a very proud thing for our school that it emphasizes on learning of yoga in our school so how to perform chakrasana in the asan the figure of the body becomes like a chakra therefore the asan is called as chakrasana firstly lie down on your back fix your hands firmly on the ground then raise the middle portion of your body upward raise it as high as possible so that your body is in a semicircle position then keep your head downwards between your hands in the beginning keep the position or for 1 minute and then after some days you can increase the time accordingly in the textbook uh, the hills are been raised upward there is no need to raise your hills upward you can keep your legs i mean the feet uh, like a flat feet there are no need to raise your hills benefits of chakrasana it cures back pain as it is a back stretching asan it but obviously helps in curing your back pain it cures any pain in the kidneys it is also helpful in removing obesity it prevents the problems of hernia it cures infertility asthma and osteoporosis it gives relief from stress and reduces depression The semicircular position makes the dorsal side of the body to stretch making the chest to expand thus more fresh oxygen is been made available so this all are the benefits of the asan chakrasana so when you should avoid doing this asan that is contraindications of this asan so avoid performing this asan if you have migraine headache low blood pressure diarrhea avoid doing this asan if you have peptic ulcer hernia this asan should be avoided in case of hip or spinal problems pregnant women should also avoid doing this asan So there are some major precautions to be taken while performing each and every asan. So be careful while doing all the asans. The next asan is Gomukhasan. The name of Gomukhasan is derived from the Sanskrit word go means cow and mukha means head. This asan stretches several parts of the body. And this stretch is simultaneous. including ankle thigh hip chest neck arms and hands so overall stretching of your muscles is been carried out in this particular asan which is gomukhasan how to perform gomukhasan slide the knees together in front and stacking the right knee directly on the top of the left slide back in between the feet which should be equidistant from the hips support 
bed evenly in the midst of the sitting bone. Extend left arm up, then bring the left hand down to the center of the back. Reach right arm out to the same side and parallel to the floor. Then rotate the arm inward. Thumb with Thumb will turn first towards the floor until the palm faces above. Take a deep breath and while exhaling, sweep right arm behind and in the hollow of the lower back. Keeping spine long and hold hands behind the back. Then lift your elbow toward upward direction. Then draw your right elbow towards the floor. Keep the left arm close to the head. Lastly, release your arms, uncross your legs and repeat Gomukhasan with the left knee on the top and the left elbow pointing downwards. So what are the benefits of Gomukhasan? Gomukhasan helps in relaxing a person. It stimulates the kidneys. Gomukhasan is helpful in relieving alignments like diabetes and high blood pressure. Since practicing Gomukhasan leads to the development of the muscles of the lower back, hips and the knees. So Gomukhasan is beneficial for backache and it may be used to develop all round muscles of your body. Contraindications of Gomukhasan the individual who suffers from shoulder, knee or back pain should avoid doing Gomukhasan. It also avoids the person suffering from kidney injury should avoid this asan. Avoid this asan in case of recent or chronic knee or hip injury or inflammation. The next asana is Parvatasana. Parvatasana is one of the important seated yoga posture. As the pose resembles a mountain, it is called as Parvatasana or it is also called as mountain pose. So we are going to study about how to perform Parvatasana. Firstly sit down on the floor keeping cross leg position. The legs are kept apart a little more than the hip width. Bring hands in front so that the palms face towards the performer. Exhale and move hands over the head. Keep your fingers interlocked and hands stretched upward. Pull torso in upward direction and stretch it as much as a high. Hold this position for a little longer and breathe normally. The hands should be straight in the direction of the sky moving across your ears. Come down in the original position and repeat the asan for 8 to 10 times. Benefits of Parvatasana It helps in enhancing height. It reduces the extra fat in the back and also in the waist. It tones the abdominal muscles and thus stimulates the organs of the abdominal region. It is extremely beneficial in case of asthma. It helps in reducing back pain. It improves the function of the spinal cord. It gives relief from the tension in the shoulders and back. Hence, this is very useful asan in developing and toning of the body. This all are the benefits related to Parvatasana. Now finally the contraindications of this asana. If you are suffering from the heart problems, hyperacidity, high blood pressure, slip disc and hernia, you should avoid this asana. You should never do this asana. Pregnant women should avoid doing this asana. If you have or had an abdominal surgery recently, you should avoid performing this asan. The individual suffering from piles should avoid this asan. 
they should not take a risk and do this asan the asan that is bhujangasan and paschimottanasan procedures benefits contraindications of this asans are already being discussed in the asthma section so there is no need to explain or discuss it again i hope you would study it from the previous session matsyasan the name matsyasan is derived from sanskrit word matsya means fish matsyasan is also known as fish pose as shown in the figure the photo is of veer kalikar you can observe the extreme flexibility of his back he is a very young student of our yoga class again it's a proud moment to tell that he is the smallest kid in our yoga class i feel very proud to have such a students in our school so how to perform matsyasan performing the asan you should sit in a padmasana then lie down in the spine position and make an arc behind your back hold your toes with your fingers of your hands that is index finger and thumb stay for some time in this position wherein your forehead touches the floor making an arc to your back it looks a very difficult asan but it's really very easy and you should not do it in an extreme position you can do it normally by touching your head instead of touching your forehead what are the benefits of matsyasan it is helpful in curing back pain knee pain and tonsillitis it also cures the defects of eyes skin diseases can be cured if we practice this asan regularly this asan is also helpful for treatment of diabetes it also helps in relieving tension in the neck and shoulder it provides relief from respiratory disorders by encouraging deep breathing it improves posture it is the best asan to get relief from asthma so this were all the eight benefits of performing matsyasana contraindications of matsyasana avoid doing this asan if you have a high or low blood pressure the people suffering from migraine and isomia shall avoid this asan the individual who have neck injury or lower back problem should not perform this asan this was all for the part 2 in the next part we are going to discuss the remaining points till then do practice yoga be safe be home take care thank you